Hey, it's Just So Trish, and I want to show you my favorite way to bind. This has got to be the most easiest labor, less labor, whatever. So, I love comb binding. It is just, um, I find it to be very easy. All of the things I've got to show you are actually full eight and a half by 11, but I could actually cut them and make them smaller. You've seen them. They do not last forever and no way do they last forever, but I have found that they are a great fix. So if any of you have been watching my planner video, you know that I have the plastic comb on it. What I really like about it is I can pull things. I can take things out of it and change it up because you've seen that I had to do that when I just changed up my curriculum and I was able to take everything apart in order to do it you need a comb binding machine and this is the sticky part that a lot of people are like oh. um, if you look surplus sales old offices eBay you can typically find them I have a really <coughs> nice one I actually inherited from my mom my mom handed it over as long as I lend it to her that they had in a business. This thing's probably 30 years old. And then I've also over, ooh. Because we know I'm just a mess. Um, you can also get kind of a personal sized one. And I have used these over the years too. You can typically punch a piece of paper about four or five at a time and then you do the comb binding you can't do the really big ones you can but they're a lot of effort to do and I have had more mess ups on this because I'm in a hurry and I do too many papers and then I didn't get it in right so there's different sizes if I can find one on Amazon I actually I found one on Amazon that is a comb binder I'm gonna put it in the description a link to it and it's like $45 which is a lot but at the same time is not a lot because we me I these things are so cheap cheap kind of deal so <coughs> I like using them I like making workbooks out of them I like printing books um, I have a couple to show you this one right here um, you know, Evan Moore and Carson DeLoso publishers often have PDFs that you can buy. And the PDF is the same price as if you bought the book, except you don't have shipping. And a lot of times it's like, okay, but then I have all those papers. I really want a book form. Well, you can print and bind. So this is one of those daily handwriting practice pages. And I have the entire book printed. And if you have a good printer, which I love printing books. My favorite printer is a brother's printer. And I actually have um, I have a description where I talk about printing and binding and what you tools you need. But I get into like why it's cheap. And I'll put a link to that blog post here. But sometimes I just use cardstock as a cover and this is just regular copy paper and cardstock as a back and I print it and bind it <laughs> um, we worked on IEW's um, fix it grammar and on the fix it grammar the student book is a PDF so I printed it um, sometimes as a cover I will laminate just a regular piece of paper and laminate that and use that as a cover I actually found that works the best I don't like laminating cardstock because the cardstock gets a little bit hard for the machine. It's not impossible, but I don't like wearing down my machine. <laughs> and I'll show you, you know, she had her work just like a regular notebook and I just did the same thing for the back and did it up that way. Another one I have is a PDF I have is the picture smart Bible and I just did the manual and I printed out the manual and I laminated it and I'm done. And I like it because I have it electronically, I have it in writing. So I love these. 
All right, so this, oh, and by the way, they come in all sizes, like little combs, and I cannot remember the Beautiful Feet. Beautiful Feet actually uses them for their curriculum too. And you can see this one is well worn. They'll kind of pull apart. All I really need to do is put this on a, um, on here, I could put a new one on here or restring it. I'm not gonna worry about it at this time. And what they did with theirs is their cover is a craft paper cardstock that they put, it almost looks like contact paper. It's not laminate, it's just contact paper that they used. And it makes a really, really nice book. So what makes it cheap? A little bit of laminate paper in a comb binder, you have books. So the initial investment is going to be the comb binder, and I'm going to show you that. But what I want to show you are the combs. The combs come in so many different sizes. The bigger they are, the more paper they hold. Of course. Let me see. Um, I... They're, they're cheap. I'm like I have a box of just different sizes from teeny tiny. I have a teeny tiny one in here. I know I do. I mean, they're just, they're little. You know, so you don't feel like, and this is a great way for kids that want to practice self-publishing. They can come in different colors. Like that one's, I don't know, see-through blue. So these are all kind of my smaller ones. I have them um, through different sizes. I, they can be, the other part too is they can be reused. This is a tiny one that got squished. It might have been used. I mean, it is teeny. I don't know if you'd put more than 20 pages in there or whatever, but you have it. I also like this for the aspect of maybe doing our, doing a portfolio. I can combine the portfolio. And these are my larger ones. I have them everywhere. The larger ones tend to go flat. Now you can't, it's not spiral, you can't fold them over perfectly, you know. <laughs> you can, They lay flat. I like it because they lay flat, but you know, you still have kind of that aspect if you try to fold them over. They don't work well, well real well. But I haven't found a big problem. I think that's kind of being, I don't know. So let me show you the machine. Okay, this is the actual binder machine. The parts up here is where you put the combs on. I'll show you that. The combs fit up in here and you can place it. Well, not well one-handed. They sit there. I'll show you how that's done. Down here is the hole punching. Now, if you want to do different sizes, they tell you where to start so you don't have a hole halfway on the paper. And then down here on mine is the tray that collects all of the paper scraps. So, there we go. Um, so this is, you just stick it in and then you can move this dial here and it will show you, you know, so then you can just get a lot punched. Oh, and it's got this long handle. See that? And that's what does your thing. So there's my holes. The nice part is, say I have a pad of paper, and I want to make my own journal. Line it in there. See, it sounds a little bit different with that paper, but I have the journal. And then, <laughs> I will set these. I don't know if you can see that really well because of my lighting. Let me, hold on. All right, so then you slide it in, and now you're going to push this back. And when you push it back, the little things open, catch it. And then all you need to do... So I would just come in here, you see that? Oh, can you see it? Focus. 
fold it, and then you close it back up. And that's how you bind it. That's it. So I can add more. I would just trim the end off here, and there is my little bound book. That's still stuck together. So not bad. There you go. I would just trim this part off, and you have a book. And so if you have extra paper hanging around, or if you got the things you've cut off, whatever, you find bulk paper, you can make little notebooks, no problem. The thing is with these, depending on the size, really dictates what you're getting. You can get a hundred of these for 10 bucks. That is cheap. They are so inexpensive. And so collect a little bit of different sizes and you have them ready to go. So I definitely, this is my favorite. Obviously I use it a lot. Um, I have considered doing the Google books and I've done that. I've done that with Alonzo Reed and um, a lot of different books that I found online on Google that I really like the older books and I will print and bind them and then I put them on my shelf. This is good if you want to increase your literature, classic literature. What I haven't done yet, but I plan to do is actually folding, doing the booklet style, folding it, not even cutting it and crimping it, but doing one page at a time. So I'm going to have to go through and fold them. Then I can slide them in here and do bound books with this. It's not going to be a forever hold. And as much as I want to think that my hot glue method or my other types of glues are going to hold up for eternity, they're not. I just need them to hold up about 15, 20 years. I might get 10, depending on the use of these. But I could also probably just replace the combs, depending on how I do it. Um, and the other part too is you can run labels down the side. That's one of the things I really like. And I like it has a smooth finish. So anyways, I hope you like this video. I hope if you're interested in binding, I have other binding techniques, believe it or not. I have a lot of binding techniques. One of my favorite things is to do is to bind. Um, I don't even mind taking apart books and binding them. I have, I also use the binding services at the office stores so that I can get my things done. So I hope this helps. I will talk to you later. Peace out. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.